Welcome back to episode 90 of the Block Runner Podcast. I'm your host, William, always here with your co-host, I-Man. What's going on, Willis? What is up, I-Man? <laughs> All right, so we had a, an extremely long week. You know what we haven't done is the roundtables for two weeks in a row uh, because of a yeah. whole bunch of stuff going on. Uh, but we want, I, I want to, dude, I want to keep going with these roundtables because they're important and it keeps... It keeps a timestamp on everything that we've been doing, as well as everything that's been going on with Decentraland. Um, well, I'll be honest, dude. Like, uh, I, yeah, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> I genuinely lost. I didn't lose like interest in him in the, in the fact that like uh, during the beginning, there's definitely a lot more momentum, not just round tables. I guess with the community in general. I guess it just yeah. felt like people were more willing to like collaborate with each other now all of a sudden we're, now that that energy kind of died off everyone's just doing their own thing again in decentraland and it's, it's just like the core us you know the dcl core guys which is cool like we love all you guys frankie maddie anorak sometimes rio but we still love you nonetheless <laughs> <laughs> you know he's got scheduling issues and stuff yeah so i understand that but the whole idea is it was supposed to be like a I don't know, like catalyze like the actual whole community coming together to discuss like important things, right? That's like relevant to everyone. Things like the DAO. Dude, the DAO launched like two months ago and like we haven't even talked about it like yeah. as a community. We haven't even like tapped on like the idea of what this means. Like nobody gives a fuck. And that, that's kind of disappointing to me at least. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm with you because ultimately what you're talking about is having a conversation with a community, but have a, a utility for it. A, a, some yeah, like kind something of purpose. good coming out of it, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I, I'm with you because I'm a, I'm a utility type of guy. I want to do things that have some form of function yeah. and not just like just chat about like a, what, whatever's going on. Yeah, like a get like a get together and we're all just like shooting the shit. Yeah, there's, it's cool. I think like there's time for that. I think that's which that should be like, every other time except for the roundtable time i feel like roundtable time was supposed to be like the time where we get down to like the business of things you know what i mean yeah i just wonder you know is there is there stuff to talk about like from a utility standpoint every single week i, I think mean, there like, only would be if if we all agreed as far as like uh, what the focus should be as a community i don't think that's that's i think that's what's missing because like i said everyone's like segregated doing their own thing so what's the need to collaborate and work together if we're not even working on the same stuff you know what i mean sure or sure. like working towards the same goals at least that still hasn't been established like what is the goal you know as far as like the community working together you know yeah maybe there is supposed to be one maybe it is supposed to be like this everyone's just doing their own thing right and then i don't know like winners and losers come out of it we'll see yeah um, I, I think there was a perfect storm when we started this round table back in the day. And especially with COVID, there was nothing else oh, to yeah. do but work on, you know, stuff in Decentraland just because, you know, it was interesting and there was something to do there. And I don't know if there's a whole lot of opportunity to collaborate on anything other than like just coming together to talk about what we're working on. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, like... Uh, specifically the DAO, that is one thing that we should be talking about uh, it's because it's not being utilized. Uh, there's not a huge proposal that needs a discussion. Um, yeah, I guess that would be this, the discussion to have, right? Like it, it, if this is, if the DAO is the tool for the community to organize and to like execute on like, especially like the spending of the funds that are allocated to it right now, we got like a couple million dollars just sitting there. Yeah. You know, and like the conversation kind of got started for a little bit. It seems like it was veering towards more like, like just airdrop it to everybody. Let's just have like a big UBI orgy. You know what I mean? But obviously, I don't think that's healthy and sustainable for the ecosystem in the long run, right? Like, I think there needs to be an actual discussion. Sure. sure. You know, just like any any entity has right like you think of it as we're, this is like a corporation here but like nobody's sitting at the board table to discuss yeah that's you know a good point mean? that's a good point that's what's happening here it's like it, yeah it's a company that's that the board members aren't congregating to kind of like make these core decisions that need to be made all right sorry about that guys had to jump out take care of a couple of things real life events but uh we're back uh to talk about the metaverse again 
And uh, so ultimately, I agree with what you're saying. I mean, I think there has to be some sort of call to action for our roundtables. Um, <clears throat> maybe we just got to do a little bit better job of organizing the main topic. And the main topic could be, let's break down the Dow. Let's figure out what is the first proposal that we think should be funded. Yeah, um, maybe it is. Maybe it is resting on our shoulders, dude. That's that's the big maybe like maybe this is the problem because <laughs> i don't know like we kind of like uh, again kickstarted the whole thing I was kind of hoping like uh would be enough to get the community you know to, to, to be the catalyst to get the community to self-govern you know yeah. what i mean and collaborate amongst each other and it, it was starting to look like it was happening and then it kind of just fizzled away i think what you said about the covid stuff makes a lot of sense yeah you know once the covid, COVID reality started becoming less of a problem people started focusing their attention on like you know real life shit again you know so. what it, so yeah so it's it's like um it's the the collision of realities right we have the real life and we have the metaverse life and the yeah, life which one that, do you spend the majority of your time on right well i think there's a there's a determining factor that dictates where you spend the most time and that determining factor is where do you make your money is it from the real life or the metaverse life yeah, and in most in like and not even there's that like the there's also a lot of forces pulling people in the crypto oh, yeah. space too. Like DeFi popped oh, up at sure. some point and totally just killed whatever energy we had going in the metaverse, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's DeFi and then Bitcoin taking off. It's like uh, you know I, I'm I'm already starting to get phone calls from 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 people on asking me to explain what Bitcoin is. Really? After after a couple of years of telling everybody is like, hey, Bitcoin's at six thousand. It's probably a good idea to you know consider looking into it. And crickets, dude, crickets for two years. Yep. Until what? Until. And I, I guess until they look at the price and they realize, hey, it wasn't fifteen thousand dollars a couple of weeks ago. It's like maybe now's the time to get in. Yeah. And it's still, I mean. We're still early in this bull cycle, mm -hmm. but but anyway, the point is those phone calls are starting to trickle in. Yeah, so yeah, I guess this is the start of like a, a retail FOMO cycle, I guess, right? When people yeah. start to become aware of Bitcoin and crypto, all of a sudden. Yeah. So like, yeah, people will slowly start to trickle in. So yeah, luckily these people contacting you, they're still early to the point where they could still experience some exponential gains if they get in now you know potentially that's what we're all imagining for ourselves right <laughs> yeah for sure yeah ultimately yeah. yeah i mean if if you're thinking about bitcoin right now you're still early um but you know I, we like this technology so we're always going to be talking about it and uh i guess when the price is low people tend to ignore you until you know they they feel like they can make money now yeah, but you know, anyways, that's a side note. Let's um, let's continue with this decentraland talk. I think ultimately you're right. We just gotta f kind of manage this whole whole thing. Like, have some sort of outcome, some goal, some desired outcome that we want, and not necessarily to benefit you know any one entity, but benefit decentraland as a whole. And I think one of the most important things that we have, like, in front of us, like, looming is how do we get Decentraland on a mobile? Mm. And is it going to be the Decentraland team making it or is it going to be a community member making it? I think that's one of the most important things we need to figure out now because once it gets on a mobile, like, everything changes. Everything is, it's a, it's a whole new metaverse at that point. Yeah. So because, what do you think, well, what's your personal thoughts on that? I'm actually okay with a community member making it. They just have to be capable of it, and 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 obviously there's funding in in the DAO already for Thinking it. Thinking what exactly though? What if somebody made a a mobile app that's not necessarily like the the open decentral decentraland world? What if it's just like uh like let's use us for example? What if they're just gateway portals to specific verses within the MetaZone platform? You know what I mean? So let's say Corona Zombies is one of the application features of this DCL app. You want to play Corona Zombies. You select it mm. and it, it, it gives you a specific, you know, 
Well, I zone think... that you can experience and play on. I guess the client version of that, but also teleport to all the like tangential locations too. Well, to I, I think first. the proper way to do that is it can't be biased, right? It can't be like, you know, hey, start here at some random location of somebody's parcel. Now there there could be like a little feature that says you know uh, parcel of the day, and it's like happens to be somebody's art display, right? Uh, but ultimately, it has to be an unbiased application that you download that will take you to Genesis Plaza and then from there you figure out as a citizen where, where do you want to go. Uh, so but, basically Decentraland. Basically Decentraland. Now does that mean Decentraland team has to make it? If that's what that means and that's they should make it. Most likely that's what that means yeah. If, if it's if we're just putting Decentraland onto the mobile platform ecosystem then yeah I think that's something the yeah. team has to handle. Yeah, you know, it's uh, if it's something like what I described, like something MetaZone could just do, like for ourselves using Decentraland as well, a platform. It, it's a tall order, I man, because not only do you have to make the client, but you have to maintain the client. So anytime yeah. you know the Mac operating system updates or iOS or Android or anything like that, you have to make sure it keeps going, and then you have to like fix stuff that breaks. And you've seen MetaZone stuff breaks mm -hmm. all the time. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like we're already doing that right as far as like maintenance of platform and whatnot yeah if um, you're if if your proposal is hey metazone team we can build it we can do it oscar has made a bunch of these applications client applications before for the mac for windows for for ios and android he has experience doing that we could actually do it um i just don't know if we'll get a proposal in and get funded yeah. for do that now, yeah, my, my gut instinct says no. Yeah, same here. Unless the proposal outlines how you're going to do exactly what the team should be doing, meaning like it's 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 an unbiased, you know, application not favoring any third See, party entity. And whatever. there's there's a ton of ways to do this. Um, you know, this is a good topic for the roundtable. This is the the topic we should be talking in the roundtable. But and we'll bring it up again. But. The thing that we can do is let's say the MetaZone team manages the construction of this client application. And we hire a bunch of developers to just make the application. And um, and maybe there's some stipulation in the proposal that it's like 10 bucks per download. And then that money goes back into the DAO fund. Hmm. I mean that that would be a pretty solid proposal. We'll just manage it. I mean we've we've done projects like this before, so why not, you know, accelerate the process of getting this application <laughs> on everybody's hands, right on the on the cell phone? Yeah, I don't see any problem with submitting a pro proposal like that just because it gets the conversation started, right? Yeah, just like I mean, any proposal at this point is a valid one. There's nothing you can't like shit on somebody's idea at this point because right now nobody really has a clear one. And you know what? I know what yeah. I know what's happening right now. As as you're listening to this, Oscar's hearing this and be like, "Dude, guys, don't make me do more stuff," right? And so <laughs> that that's what? probably going to be a, a, an issue. But I mean, if we have the funding, we can hire the right people to do it, and we'll just yeah. manage the construction of it. Yeah, I agree. I see. Yeah, these are like core. So this is this is important to us, I guess, because we kind of like we're diving deep into the whole game development aspect of the central land. So we understand all the limitations and all the stuff we need, I guess, to build like a good game experience in on this platform. So part of our experience and journey all along has been like we we get into something and we figure out all the problems along the way, then you know which traditionally decide to try and fix those problems, right? <laughs> or at least we want to, you know, sometimes the the problems are so large in scope that we can't actually do it by ourselves, but yeah, I don't know. But so, yeah, so it's important to us, but to, to everyone else in the community who isn't developing games, they might not give a fuck. You know yeah. what I mean? So they're not so incentivized to really you know support this initiative so that's that's the problem is the fragmentation of priorities within this community you know what i mean it's 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 what we used to debate like at the beginning of this whole thing is like how the fuck is adapt supposed to coordinate 
like a community is supposed to figure out like what what's how do you set priorities you know uh, as a community when there's like so much shit going on like yeah i don't know we, yeah. like, we used to talk about this all the time man, and it's like it's starting to look like uh because like to me the obvious answer is like a decentralized model of like forming organizations or entities is, is way more efficient oh for sure you know? because yeah, yeah. yeah there's no debate at that point it's just whoever's at the top, and I guess in this instance, is Decentraland team. They are the centralized entity of this whole this whole thing. Yeah. Whatever they say goes. Like they internally decide amongst themselves. This is the direction we need to go as far as like allocating our resources because they're the ones with the resources right now. So whatever they say goes, basically. Yeah. And we've had about a solid year to kind of like observe their their thinking and like their their thought process and what they think is important. And so far from what I've seen, it, it, for sure, they focus on improving the platform, which is good because if, by them doing that, the rest of us have like more tools to work with and like build cool shit ourselves. Agreed. But also it's to host like, <clears throat> I don't know, three or four events a year. It sounds like they allocate a lot of their resources to this, you know? So as a, it, it seems like the community, the community is content with that because based off of the Halloween event, everyone was like super happy about the outcome of it. You know, mm-hmm. from what I saw, yeah. I didn't hear anybody complain about it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But to, um, I don't. But my thoughts, I don't know, man. Like, I think it's perfectly fine. That's their focus, but that's not. That's not conducive for long term longevity, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, like, it's it, funny. We were I I I showed you the conversation that I was, that I had with P Dub. Remember that conversation? So so P Dub, he's um you know he's he's a, a big time you know meta guy. So he he's he's purchased a lot of metas and he's really into the revenue generating metas as you and I are, as Oscar, all of us are. And uh, at, you know with these productive NFTs being a new class of uh, non fungible tokens. You know, he sees the difference between what could, what is a functional NFT versus a non-functional one. So, you know, in that conversation we were having with P-Dub, he was, you know, interested in, like, making, like, you know, just investing in these non-fungible uh, functional NFTs. So <clears throat> I think it's it's one of those things where we need to figure out how do we get that longevity aspect into the minds of, of everyone in Decentraland, just because events are not sustainable. You can't just keep setting yeah. events every single week. It, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of not going to work. That's what I'm alluding to essentially is that's, that's what I'm talking about. The fragmentation, I guess it's and, not even priority. It's just ideology. And, I and guess, my, yeah. Point. And so I a hundred percent agree. And my point is people are starting to realize this. He was saying that we cannot rely on setting events in order to make these metas revenue generating. They have well, to yeah. they have mm-hmm. to be like Corona Zombies or like the Ethermon metas where the game runs itself and the developers have a requirement in 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 designing these games to be self-sustaining to to function without having to set events. Like if you want to upgrade your Kiari or your Cobras or your Yarmiao you go and, and, f- and take care of the thing and, and feed it and then battle it and then up, you know, level it up and do whatever it takes to upgrade that NFT without having to set events, without having to depend on these, these events to occur. And, uh, yeah. and it's the same, the same goes with these revenue generating metas. You cannot always have to send or, or set events in order to generate revenue. They have <clears> to <throat> like run as a regular business. You have to be making money every single day. Not not by setting events. Well, I think that's why Decentraland that that it's their priority and focus because they're the only ones who could potentially like make these showcase events at least to, like showcase the yeah but, progression of their platform because they're the only ones with the resources to do that. Do like that yeah, Halloween but, event was costly, I'm sure. Yeah, you know? and that's and that's my point. It's like that Halloween event that there there is no replayability in that thing. As soon as yeah. you you go through that quest, you're done. You there, there's no reason to go back and redo it. That's so that, then the, that's the, part the question of the is like, could those resources invested in that event have been better spent on actually creating like an actual game with persistent value to it? Meaning, yes, which is essentially what we're trying to do. Yes, so they could just, you know, take our model and just you know, 
build it themselves, you know, with all the money they have, you know, I'm assuming they still have to have some of it, right? They raised yeah. over $20 million. There's no way they burnt through all that in a couple of years, right? I don't Yo, think so. And not only that, they, they got investors too. So they have more than 20 million or they had more. Yeah. So you would think like, you know, if, if they really wanted Decentraland to become like a big, you know, triple A tier gaming platform for and attract game developers, they, you know, part of their marketing strategy, at least it would be for us, right? If we had all these resources and we're building this platform, part of our strategy would be we got to showcase the platform ourselves to attract the developers that want right. to come and build. So that's right. They're, but they're not doing that. They're, they're, they're kind of like allocating these resources to for big, like, again, like to make a big show, which is good because now the rest of us who are like, you know, trying to like indie dev in this, in this world is now we kind of have like a, a benchmark to kind of like chase after, right? Like, Oh shit. Like, look how beautiful that, that thing looks. It's like, I, I want that to be in my game. You know what I mean? But it's much more difficult for us because we don't have the resources they have to do that. You know? So I don't know. Like, is it, is it wise what they're doing? Like, they're just kind of like showing the world like this is what's possible, right? You know what? It, it sort of depends. I think the answer to your question, is it wise? My answer is it depends. I think I think it's wise from the current development roadmap standpoint in the sense that they might be developing long-term persistent functionality that, yeah. de- that developers like, you know, like the MetaZone team, Ethermon, um, pirate showers, all these developers are working on, you know, persistent games. I think Decentraland is working on a more persistent functionality. And what I mean by that is there's been talks from the Decentraland team about having some mineable artifact within Decentraland, something that you earn just by being in, in, in the world and, and exploring. Uh, so this is purely like speculation at this point, but Remember how we were talking about all these mining mechanics and Decentraland needs to have some sort of some sort of a coin or NFT or whatever that's discoverable just by being in the world. Yeah. And so I'm thinking they might be working on that. So I it so ultimately my what I'm trying to say is I think Decentraland understands this to a certain extent. Um but I don't know if they know that events just like pumping out wearable nfts is not sustainable right that is not going to continue on now yeah. it's different when in the context of you have the community making wearable nfts and an infinite supply of 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 wearables doesn't kill the market it just makes the market more um uh, more diverse and it forces the the shopper to being more picky Right. Um, so so there's that. Like ultimately, if you have a license based system like it, it currently is now transitioning to open based system for wearables, it is better to be open and have an infinite supply of wearables created by the community rather than a license based system that has an infinite supply from one entity, which is Decentraland. So, so, and, and I know that's sort of difficult to understand, but ultimately you want to be an open market so that it governs itself. It has its own market, um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what you're sa- mm-hmm. so what you're saying is like that, that's Decentraland's, like, if we were to wrap it all up in like a quick analysis of like what Decentraland, what they think as far as like what their role should be in this uh, project or this platform. It's to to innovate the new, whatever you want to call it, I guess like the products of Decentraland, wearables being one of them. They innovated it in the sense they were the first ones to create them, mint them, distribute them, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. And then all, and then slowly over time, this process becomes, you know, more decentralized into the point where anybody has the rights now to That's do right. the same thing. That's right. So they're going to do that for every aspect of whatever the future platform features are. So yeah. at least that's probably what's in their head, right? So <clears throat> Yeah, um, and and so what gives me confidence in the Decentraland team is that they went from a licensed wearables model, right? They were making their own wearables and issuing them to everybody in Decentraland um in yeah. these bunch of events, but now they're transitioning to an o- more open model. So that gives me confidence in the fact that I'm sure 
they're aware that events are not sustainable, right? But it is what they have now, and that's why they want everybody to set events because that's what attracts people to come to Decentraland. But yeah. having said that, that doesn't mean that they're going to be depending on events a year from now. Maybe they're they're developing these tools for the developers to make games like Corona Zombies or make it easier to make more persistent you know, experiences. Yeah. Because that is what ultimately is going to create sustainability with, you know, with the economy within Decentraland and mm-hmm. people coming back to play De- in Decentraland. That's, that's what you want. That's what everybody wants. Yeah. No, I think it's working. It's definitely slowly improving. I don't think a year ago we could have built what we have right now in Corona Zombies. No, definitely not. You know what I mean? So that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. So then you just kind of think like, what's going to be possible a year from now? You know, hopefully they keep, you know, raising the bar every year. Things just get better and better. Um, yeah. I guess until it gets to like some kind of like critical point where like all of a sudden there's just so many like killer features to this like platform that it's like really easy to make an attractive game, I guess, and like attract a core player base and stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like right I mean, now, like right now, I guess it's 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 the most difficult metaverse platform, I think, as far as like, uh, well, well, there aren't really many metaverse platforms. All, all you can do is compare it to like Sandbox, right? Yeah. And Sandbox is like easy mode as far as like if you want to make some kind of like game because they designed it that way. They wanted it to be as dev friendly as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like static um, graphics, I guess, graphical limitations. Yeah, it's a sandbox, right? You yeah, have. Yeah only so many options to to make something right yeah and sdk i mean it's its own sandbox but it's much much bigger it's it's much less of a sandbox within a software development kit than it is with uh you know a uh, a team making uh, its own restrictions on what you can make within that platform yeah totally but uh, but ultimately, I mean, the reason why we're talking about this is because we've seen the light, right? We we've, we've seen in two days, people have spent, oh yeah, a lot of time killing over thirty thousand enemies in over two days, and this is from, and and we're only counting those who made it past collecting fifty metazone tokens from Corona Zombies, right? This doesn't count all the other players who killed, you know, thousands of other enemies, but. 21 people collectively have killed 30,000 enemies in Corona Zombies over two days. I mean, that takes a lot of time. That takes, uh, you know, some, some effort. I mean, this- yeah, that's, that's where we screwed up uh, in the fact that we didn't track that time, unfortunately, <laughs> because well, that's important. That's but that's part important- of, that's part of why we're doing this, right? We're, yeah, now, now we understand, like, yeah. we need to add that, that, uh, that data. We need it. We need that data. Cause that's, that's like the selling point to the whole like play to earn formula. Like people are investing their time and, and work and actually like performing the task of, you know, completing these contracts. Like this, that's real work and time. So, yeah. But the people who dedicated the most work and time, which who got finished the first, you know, first and second place, they're being directly rewarded for that. Yeah. In the, in the, in the form of our best wearables, which currently, you know, around a hundred bucks a pop. So, It'd be good to know like how much time invested went into earning a hundred dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, for sure. From what I know, based off of like personal experience, you can get about a thousand kills in about probably about an hour, right? Yeah, about a thousand would be about an hour. Yeah, for sure. So then these guys are clocking like four to five to six hours of playtime. Yeah. So not bad, dude. Not a bad That's... day at the office. This is like a, a twenty dollar an hour gig yeah, yeah, yeah. currently <laughs> <laughs> if they sell that wearable and get a hundred bucks for it off on the open market you know they just they just cleared themselves a day of labor essentially like, yeah and that's the whole point dude like that is everything like if we could bring that into the central land it's not just corona zombies but like every everybody's working again together anybody yeah. who's developing that should be the goal is to like bring this economy to life because that's that's the only way it's going to happen that's what's going to bring the people in yes you know? yeah whenever people start hearing stories like oh shit this guy made he's making 20 bucks an hour playing cz 
Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. You know, he's grinding, he's constantly winning, he's selling NFTs on the open marketplace, and he's he's making a a livable income doing that. Yeah. That's all of a sudden the floodgates are open, dude. Like it's just that's the aha moment, I think. Yeah. You know, it, it's working for Axie because they kind of like pioneered this whole thing. But it's much you know, they're doing it on their own ecosystem. Yeah. But they figured it out. They figured out the formula. It's 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 brilliant. You know, their 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 whole mission it works you know so like we need to bring that same energy into decentraland you know yeah I, mean? I i totally agree i mean I, I totally agree about the the sentiment on axie they definitely figured it out and it's something to 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 kind of learn from right we have to implement things that are working and then figure out the stuff that isn't working and try to figure yeah. out a way around it and, because if you think about it like be honest with yourself as far as like okay we're all we're we're not in the gaming space. We're in the blockchain space, right? So, like, what the hell does blockchain do to enhance games? Like, nothing. Nothing. Like, nothing. if only it just makes games way more difficult to develop. Yeah. But the only thing it does is it allows your player race to earn. To right? earn. So yeah. That's right. That's it. That's that's like the whole thing we're doing here. Yeah. So exactly. It's not like people are coming in expecting like the toppest tier gameplay. They're just looking for opportunities. You know. As long as they're investing time into this blockchain game, like they're they're they're, they're expecting to walk away from it at the end of the day with a profit. You yeah, know? yeah, and that's <laughs> that's the whole point, right? We have to build those experiences where if you if you go and purchase a a weapon NFT for Corona Zombies from a weapon crate, that landowner who sold that weapon to you generates some revenue. Then you op you open this this weapon crate. And you get, a, you know, a near-perfect weapon, right? A, a complete RNG miracle, right? It's almost perfect. And then you have this incentive. You understand that this, this weapon is almost perfect, and it's based off of an RNG from a smart contract. So, And you go and look, and there isn't a weapon on, open, on, on uh, OpenSea that, um, that comes close from a, from from a perfection standpoint. So there there's obvious incentive to upgrade that weapon. So now you have an incentive to play this game to be in Decentraland and start killing, you know, monsters and zombies and spiders and all that, so that you can continuously upgrade this rare NFT. And that is something that we're going to showcase and we're going to prove that you know our speculation that this is going to work. Why? Because we we know players, gamers, will spend, you know, tons of hours on a video game just to upgrade their gear for no gain. Just to for a virtual flex that has no monetary value. In, yeah. in, in the case with blockchain, you can virtually flex, but now there's monetary value that you can, you can extract from the work that you put in. And... I think that's going to be one of the more sustainable things that any metaverse achieves. And, uh, and, and the most important thing, we have, a, we have an added complexity in that we have to support our landowners now. We have to figure out a way to keep landowners, you know, making some sort of ROI. And that's unique to Decentraland. That's the, that doesn't happen in Sandbox, right? That, it doesn't. I mean, it's it's a completely different dynamic than than trying to figure out how you know how, how much CPU you know your computers have and, and you know creating your own ecosystem of gameplay. Like it's it's a unique thing that we have to deal with in 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 this particular metaverse. And one of the most important things what we are doing is is always including the the landowners into what we're doing because without them there is no there is no metaverse. There is no game content. There's nothing. Yeah. True. So, um, so having said that, we do have a list of winners for the last event that we want to distribute the winnings to these individuals. Yeah. And first place. Yeah. Let's see. First place went to a guest account, <laughs> but we actually know his Discord name, right? I think his name is Sconey in Discord. Uh, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. But... Yeah, first place went yeah. to Sconey, and then second place went to Ryder. Yeah, which is flat for you guys. Dude, yeah. yeah, I mean, y'all went ham for the whole duration, basically. Like, that's no joke, man. Like, 
and that, that this is you know you deserve what you got you know because you put in the work you know what i mean yeah like, yeah a lot of I, I don't know like a lot of people would not be might not be happy with it like I, I seen i saw this happen to like world of warcraft and like other big games like they start off with this like um uh, this uh, philosophy i guess where it's like yeah you reward the the hardest working actors in your in your ecosystem mm -hmm. you know by they earn the best shit because they put in the amount of work and then but over time like the casual gamers they start to complain and they start to be like hey i don't want to be a part of this anymore if i can't get any of the cool shit because i i have a life you yeah know? yeah i have other things i have kids i got work you know i can't dedicate eight hours ten hours a day to be, like, be the best at this game right so yeah. then they, these big companies start to listen to that loud you know, voice is it's very similar to politics, right? Like yeah. whoever's the loudest. <laughs> yeah, the squeaky wheel winning. gets the oil. Huh? The squeaky wheel gets the oil. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I mean, so right now, all I'm saying is, I, I don't know. To me, I like the, I like rewarding like top players, but, you know, uh, it's not, it's definitely not a new friendly thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, for sure. But, which is but, why, so, which yeah, is, which is why to counteract that, we still considered you normies and you casuals you filthy casuals yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to do this random giveaway here in a second yeah so what we're gonna do is trust the old uh, random uh dot org we're gonna put in minimum is gonna be three to 21 and so we're just gonna run through this because i know everybody's waiting for the outcome of this and we're gonna draw what four right i man yeah Okay. So no, uh, well, yeah. So just name the piece first and then just let the winner know. Okay. You, know. you tell me what the piece is. Cause I don't have, I don't have it right in front of me. Well, okay. Let's just say open source. Do you, so, you know, all four, all four that are. Yeah. It's uh, just, okay. So the exo blade went to the first place winner. Snap. Hold on. Yeah. Exo blade went to the first place winner and the exo suit went to the second place. So okay. the remaining four are, about to be RNG. So yeah, let's start with the open source first. Okay, here it goes. Open source. I'm going to click generate, and the number is 16. Number 16 is VR Landlord. Look at that. Very nice. All right. By the way, is this list um, ordered as far as, like, how's it ordered? Do you know? It's ordered from top to bottom. Like, literally by kills or by coins collected? Coins collected, yes. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, congrats, VR Landlord. Got open source. All right, so the next one is going to be... This is for the Regen Aura. Regen Aura number nine. Regen Aura, this person called Dirty Bird. With 881 <laughs> kills, 51 coins. Nice, congrats there. All right. Next one is the Arrow Guard, which is the face mask. Okay, the face mask Arrow Guard. That one is number eight. And we got Libra. Damn, this this guy won again, right? <clears throat> yeah, I think he won last time. Yeah. Yeah. So he's crushing it, co attending these events. Yeah. So he got a thousand one hundred ninety-two kills with fifty-two coins. Okay. <clears throat> Congrats, last Libra. Last but not least is the hollow piece, which is the eye display. Okay, hollow piece. And it's number hollow ten. Display. Damn, Libras. I wonder if this is the same guy, dude. It probably is. Dang. <laughs> but there's no way to verify, right? Yeah, so. there's no way to verify. <laughs> well, well, Libra, if you pulled a fast one on us, like, yeah, I guess, I guess you won. Yeah, good on you, <laughs> dude. Yeah. All That's right. it. That's it. So we got four winners, and we'll total six winners: first place, second place, and then four randos. And uh, congratulations, everybody. We'll be sending this out to you within uh, 24 to 48 hours. And then pretty soon, these contracts are going to get much more difficult and uh, much more interesting, actually. Yeah, more difficult. Uh, for sure, the wearables are going to become a much bigger deal in the sense that they're going to have the actual in-game attribute boosts assigned to them. So... And in some cases, probably in the later, later contracts that are, you know, theoretically going to be the most expensive plus the most highest rewarding ones, certain wearables <clears throat> might be like actual 
like necessary components to completing. Oh, um, for sure. The yeah. Class, or the contract. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. What, There's... Like whatever boss you end up encountering. Exactly. You know, I, I was just yeah. going to say that at a certain point, this game is going to um, get to a, to a level where you have to have a wearable in order to complete it. And the reason is, is because it's that difficult. And I mean, you could probably still still defeat it without the wearable but man you're 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 making yeah, it's it more difficult yeah it's gonna be real tough we're gonna make sure it's that tough yeah because <laughs> we want it to be that tough and it's kind of like the point because if you can make it that tough that's kind of like what supports the whole value to these nfts in the first place so exactly like, boy what's the value in buying an nft in decentraland like okay i got this cool gun i got this cool armor set but like what do you do with it yeah if there's an actual if there's actual gameplay like underpinning like you know if, without these necessary like tools like you can't you can't even compete dude like yeah. you can't even yeah you're not in the same realm so so imagine you, you expand that thought process a little bit further and imagine you need a team of like four others with a wearable set to like defeat the raid boss yeah like again like yeah that's that's what you want it to be like like if you're if you're just trying to skate by without any gear you can only go so far up in the contract ladder you know what I yeah mean? exactly that's right kind of like the point exactly right unless you grind and then you like level up your own character to like level 100 or uh your weapon nft to level 100 you could probably do it yeah but, but yeah again, again it's it's not gonna there's definitely going to be like free to play components to the game. Meaning, like if if you don't want to spend it, it's fine. Like, it's just going to take a lot. It's going to be a lot more difficult to you know yeah. get get to where you want to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, that's what's fun about making this game. Like, all these little uh, updates and progress. Like, it's it's cool to see you know what's what's possible in Decentraland. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> Yeah, this yeah, is a, I, I, this is like such an early, like barely scratching the surface of what Corona Zombies is gonna be. Is it's, it's gonna get crazy? Yeah, and hopefully it gets to the point where like PvP becomes like the oh yeah, dude, that's gonna be another contract. Thing. Yeah, contract or just like dude, think about it. Let's say the contract that you spend like let's say fifteen hundred mana, you have to get a hundred PvP kills altogether. Like if you suck, you're not gonna get a hundred kills. Kills, hmm. yeah. We'll have to think about like what's the best PvP mechanic. It could be like some type of or, like legit arena like um, battle system. <sighs> because if you, uh, yeah, we're still contemplating like as as far as like how how much utility comes to these weapons rather than just being like attribute boosts. It could be like actual abilities um, that you know having a certain weapon gives to your avatar you know what i mean like if you have this certain sword it maybe it has like a an aoe disability to it whenever you actually use it you know so if you have players around you you could just like wow slam your sword into the ground a shockwave yeah. ripples yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden everyone's stunned for two seconds you know what I mean? some shit like that like, yeah it can get crazy and uh, whether or not we can get to that point is it, to be determined but yeah yeah man like that's the kind of gameplay we should be shooting for you know so we'll see <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely we're, we're gonna try to like you know figure out ways of doing unique things with uh what we got here and yeah one of those is like adding that dynamic you know gameplay with pvp aspect because i remember when you and i were testing it that was like the most entertaining <laughs> part of <laughs> of testing corona zombies was like shooting at each other well, more like griefing. Yeah. That's what you were doing. You're just, <laughs> yeah, like we could, like right now, have the PvP enabled. You yeah. Because it was at the beginning where literally you just point your gun at, at anybody. Like the, the hitbox, apparently it's just a hitbox is running around. Yeah. But eventually we want that to be something too. I mean, either your avatar itself or what some, maybe some kind of custom avatar you could load in. I don't know. Again, yeah. another to be determined feature imagine, of the game. But. Imagine if the cube was like a, your mech suit, like yeah. that you'd have to <laughs> had different like hit boxes on that mech suit that you'd have to take down in order f like for its own PvP battle. Mm -hmm. Now that would be interesting. Yeah, totally. So, <clears throat> but yeah, we we tested it. It is fun. 
it's cool. It, it's, it gives me like Counter Strike like vibes. You know yeah. what I mean? Especially because yeah. the weapons are pretty much Counter Strike weapons right now. Yeah. So it definitely has like a Counter Strike feel to it. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yeah, for which sure. Which is awesome. Um, all right. So congratulations to the winners. Uh, we will be sending those out pretty soon. And um, let's see. Let me think. I wanted to talk about like the progress of Bitcoin and all that, but I mean, what 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 else is there to say? It's going up. It's on schedule. Yeah. It's pretty. I don't know, man. To me, it's still shocking that it's on schedule. Like that's like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, it's just shocking in the sense that it's, I, I don't it's know. fulfilling like, the prophecy. We all, it's like we all see it coming, but yeah. I mean, that happens all the time. <clears throat> just like this Trump shit. We like. I saw this coming, didn't I? Didn't I make this call? Like, if, if Trump lost, he was gonna like make a big deal about it, like uh, start claiming, yeah, for fraud. sure, yeah, yeah. But I wasn't the only one, dude. Everyone saw this coming, dude. I, who the hell thought Trump was just gonna like, you know, right off into the sunset and just like, you know, yeah. So for those who uh, who are not in the United States, we just had an election. Trump lost, and uh, a lot of people are happy, but a lot of people are not happy. As a matter of fact, like this is the the biggest turnout in a long time for voting in the United States and 74 million people voted for Biden and 70 million people voted for Trump. So that's a, I mean, that's almost a 50 50 to me. And I don't know. I think, I think it's a little odd that people were supporting Trump, but I mean, I, I don't know. I, it's not like I'm against Trump or against Biden or I like Biden or I like Trump. It's more about who has the most scientific, competent, like, outlook on correcting things, you know, from not only from an environmental standpoint, but also from an economical standpoint. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't have any trust in Trump to do that. And I definitely don't. I don't necessarily. That doesn't mean I have trust in Biden to do it. But whatever, dude. It is what yeah. it is. Yeah, all I'm saying is just, you know, you can see things coming, yeah. and then once they actually happen, it's like, wow, I can't believe it's actually happening. So I guess same feeling for Bitcoin. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, yeah let's so, call it. Let's yeah, let's call, call it, it. Yeah, let's call it here. And, yeah, let's – let's. Uh, we're going to get on with Maddie on Thursday to talk about potentially Axie or Nifty Gateway. I don't know which one yet. And then uh, let's let's try to get on to the round table. And maybe you should uh, come over so we can have like a you can check out the the new studio. And uh, yeah, brainstorm how to actually make it you know presentable. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because right, we're gonna get good. rid of this black stuff behind me, and and then go from there. But yeah, thank you guys right, for listening, and make sure you follow us on Twitter at the Block Runner. And also at Metazone.io. Like and comment. Subscribe on YouTube. Do all those things. Uh, let us know if you agree with us on the whole outlook on, on the metaverse being sustainable and creating persistent experiences. And uh, we will see you next week. All right, we're up. Peace. <laughs>